in this episode we are going to look for a particular vulnerability called BOLA that stands for Broken Object Level Authorization. It's a very common API vulnerability. So basically this vulnerability occurs when an API provider allows an API consumer to access the resources they are not authorized to access. In normal case scenario, a user should only be able to access their own resources. For example, you are logged into a website and you have this option of profile. When you visit that profile page, you can see your own information like your username, email, and address and stuff like that. So these are your own resources which are fetched by the API. But if that website is vulnerable to broken object level authorization, it will allow another user or a malicious user to access your resources too. What happens is API use some sort of values such as names or numbers to identify various objects. But this value can be manipulated. And if there is no proper security on that particular endpoint, a user can also access another user's sensitive information. So have a look at this URL. It has an API endpoint and it has a parameter ID, its value is 453. Basically this endpoint is using this value to fetch user's data, a user whose ID is 453. But if we change this value to 454, maybe it will give us information of other users. So basically by incrementing the value, we, ca we can fetch other users' data. It's not only limited to numbers, it can be a string, a boolean value or something else. Now let's dive into practical in our CR API application. First, let's have a look at this community section. Here we can see number of posts that have been posted by other users. We can also open up this post and see its contents. And here is the option through which we can add our own post by providing a title and a description. Now let's open our network tab and see how these posts are being fetched. And here we can see an API endpoint, community API version 2, post recent. So let's first add this in Postman. I'm just gonna duplicate this request and change its value to current endpoint and save it in CR API collection. Send this request and in the response we can see number of objects. It has key value pairs like ID, title, content, and another nested object which consists of nickname, email, vehicle ID, author ID. Well, it's kind of excessive information that we are getting. I mean, it reveals identification ID, email, and vehicle ID which kind of looks suspicious. Let's see the request of this particular post. And we can see the endpoint, community, post, and a random string. And in the response, we can see that that random string is actually a user's ID. So this user ID is being used to identify the user of this particular post. Now let's move into dashboard. Things are gonna get interesting over here, so focus. As you can see, it says your newly purchased vehicle details have been sent to your email address. Please check your email for when and PIN code of your vehicle using the Mailhawk portal. So this is my Mailhawk portal and there is no email for now. Let's go back and click here to send that email again. Also we can see that API request in the network tab, resend email. And now in a mailbox, I can see an email. This email consists of my vehicle information, a win and a pin code, which is 6390. Now let's go back to the web page and click on add vehicle and provide in the details. And we are populated with bunch of stuff on the web page. So it's a car model with this information and a map which gives the location of that vehicle. Also we can see bunch of endpoints in the network tab and also Google endpoints 
a map API. Let's click on this refresh location button and we can see a request in the network tab. API vehicle vehicle ID location. Let's add this endpoint in Postman. Send this request. And in the response, we can see car ID or vehicle ID and longitude and latitude, which is basically the location of that vehicle. So basically this means that this vehicle ID is used to fetch my vehicle details. Well, this is interesting because you found other people vehicle ID in excessive data exposure in the community section, right? What if we copy other people vehicle ID and replace it in this endpoint? Let's try this out. So back in the community section, I'm going to copy this user's vehicle ID. And in the request tab, I'm going to replace my vehicle ID with that user vehicle ID and send this request. And yes, we got it. We can see other users' information, basically their vehicle information, which is really sensitive, right? We now know what is the location of their vehicle. So this is how Bola vulnerability is exploited. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.